All right, guys. What I have here is a valve body out of a 4L80E. Um, in the middle of the actually building the trans. I didn't video the teardown because I actually uh, have one already uh, on uh, my channel with that. But the complaint with this 2001 uh, GMC Savannah 3500 van was when this gets hot, probably after running for about an hour or so, um, the higher gears the, uh, the customer said it slips. We actually never felt the problem, but after about an hour of driving, these guys saying the engine's just racing, it's slipping real bad, and, and this guy's pretty in tune to what's going on, so um, we certainly felt there was some kind of a problem. Uh, but when it's cold, it works fine. Um, no problems at all, but only after maybe about an hour driving, especially on the highway, it's a, actually a plumber's truck. Um, plumber's van, so after about like some highway driving and, and after running for a while, it gets uh, it gets uh, starts gets screwed up in the in the higher gears. Not giving us any codes, uh, but actually, I did want to show you. This is uh, one of the overdrive clutches in the and there's, there's nothing left on it. It's uh, completely gone, and these are the rest of them. Had to change a couple of steels, and this here is bad so there was obviously there's definitely something going on but what I personally think is going on with this especially what he's saying from the fact that it's good when it's cold and it starts screwing up when it gets hot and this uh, probably has about 150,000 miles on it um, with these 4L80E's the actuator feed limit valve the bore wears out and when that happens you'll get symptoms just like the guy is explaining. Uh, the actuator feed limit is actually the one, the valve that supplies the oil to the solenoids. And if there's the loss of oil, if there's not enough oil going in, it might not be able to stroke a shift valve and it's gonna start screwing up. So that's what I personally think is, uh, is going on. And this valve, uh, this screen behind the manual valve, as you may know, is your actuator feed limit valve screen. Always gets changed on, on an old wall. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to vacuum test the, the critical wear area according to Sonex is, is right in here. This is the valve train here and the lockup valve, let's see, the lockup valve goes here and this is the valve train here. And the critical wear area according to Sonex vacuum test guides is this area right here. So we're going to vacuum test that area. And then probably what we're going to do is I have this kit, uh, which puts, this is the kit laid out. This puts, uh, actually going to put an oversized actuator feed limit valve. This is a transco kit with springs. It comes with the reamer, whoops, the reamer and the reamer guide. Uh, it's a pretty cool setup. I do it on, on every overhaul because it's, every, especially if it has a uh, 100,000 plus on it, it really, ha it really ha has to be done. I've ran into some problems with it. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to test this uh, actuator feed limit, vacuum test it, and then we're going to run the, uh, then we'll bore it out, put the oversized one in, clean it out, and we'll vacuum test it again. So here is my vacuum test kit. Actually, what I want to do is move the camera a little closer in so everybody can see. So uh, give me one sec. I'm going to just re reposition. All right. So before we start vacuum testing, the first thing we have to do is you need at least um, uh, the pump to work the vacuum is going to be at least a 3 CFM pump. Um, and then the second thing what we have to do before we can even vacuum test we have to make sure that it is cal calibrated and the way we do that is we're going to turn this pump on and we're going to use this bleed knob let me just back this up a little bit we're going to use this knob to calibrate the uh, the um, the needle we want to start it we want to have it at least at five inches and then there's a hole here that you put your finger over and you want to have at least 25 inches. I know mine doesn't go to 25, it goes maybe about to 22, 23, but that's the best that I can get it. 
So I'm going to turn this on and use this bleed here. See, they want it at, at least five. All right, so we got it at five, and then we're going to block the hole with our thumb right here. We're going to block the hole, and it goes up to 20. We're going to calibrate this more as far as it can go, and I'm at about, uh, about 20, about 22. So you release it, it goes to five. The block it. They wanted it at 25, but for some reason, one goes to about 22, and I've been working with that. Okay, so now we know that it's calibrated. All right, so now that it is calibrated, we take out this piece screws in here, the sub block with the hole in it, and we take the hose and we plug it in. Now, the thing is with vacuum testing is there's really no, there's no guide to say what's good, what's bad. You have to kind of keep a log of what you do and compare it. So I know with these, these are normally, when I vacuum test this, I don't know, it's maybe about like um, like 18 inches. Uh, and to me that is good. Anything below that, it might be, the bore might be worn. Uh, but again, there is no good or bad uh, chart to go by. As you do this, you should keep a log of what it is and, and compare it as you keep, as you keep doing it. So we're going to turn the um, pump on. And what I like to do is put a little uh, grease around this here, the, the uh, green stuff, to help it seal better. You know, you can use like a piece of rubber or something like that. And then we're going to put this on. And we're gonna turn our pump on and see what we got. I'm gonna push down a little on it. Okay, we got about, we got about 14. Got about, I'm, I'm pushing, you know, kind of, kind of hard on it to seal it. I got about 15, 14 and a half, 15. And, I'm, and the last one I did, I'm used to seeing about 18. So we definitely got, and I'm pushing real hard on it now. You can see the needle moving a little bit. So I got about 15 inches. And it should be probably more along the lines of, uh, of 17 or 18. So we definitely have um, uh, uh, an issue, which I kind of thought from what he was describing, right off the bat, I had a feeling it was something like that. Um, so what I want to do is get this valve body set up, get it anchored. I'll, I'll explain what I do, and we're going to read this out with the uh, tool. Uh, so I will be right back. All right, before actually I actually anchor the valve body, I want to take the valve out. We're going to take the actuator feed limit valve and spring uh, out. So uh, we're going to just, uh, there's a stopper in here. It's got a really, really heavy spring on it. So we're going to take the clip out. This is the spring. And now let me get my scribe here. Let me find it. Okay. And we're going to take the valve out. Okay. And this is the valve. This is the valve that come out. And this is the valve that's going to go back in. This is the o the oversized one. Okay, so this setup's going to go like that. Now, um, when you're using, there's actually two types. So when you're using this kit, just make sure you read the direction because there is a first design and a second design. Okay, the let me get this so you can see it here. The first design has the uh, roll pin and and the end plug. And for that, you use the white spring only. You get a whole bunch of springs in the kit. There's an, in this kit, there's enough to do like six valve bodies. And if you have the clip type, which we have, later style, we're going to use the orange and the plain spring. Uh, so just make sure that you read the directions, know exactly what you have. 
so you put in uh, correctly. Okay, so let me just anchor this thing down and I'll be back in a sec. I'll show, I'll show you what I do. All right, so I got this thing anchored to the bench. Uh, what do I have is I have is a, a, under here, I have a piece of wood kind of going across almost the length of the valve body. So everything kind of stays flat. Uh, the, these uh, large vice grips uh, I have in the accumulator uh, bore where the spring goes and clamp to the bottom of the bench and so the valve body can't twist I have uh, one of my punches in this way so this thing is pretty is pretty solid and now we're going to get set up to uh, ream this uh, valve body out so let me just uh, make sure the angle everything is good and I'm going to be right back okay so now we're going to read this out and we're going to put the oversized valve in. So what we're going to use first is we have our reamer and we have our reamer guide. Okay, so this has a, a small hole here and a larger hole here. This actually is the guide. So this is going to slide in all the way till the bottom's out. It's going to look like that. Okay, and then at that point, this piece is going to slide all the way in like this until this bottoms out and then what you do is you put a little vice grip on it because you don't want that to turn so you put the little vice grip on it clamp it down to keep it from turning okay we're going to coat this whole thing with some ATF Okay, we're going to put our drill on. Okay, and then we're going to just spin it very lightly. If I put my hand here, I guess I'm going to be in the way. So that's not going to work, so you know what? Let me just change angles. Uh, give me one sec. All right, I just kind of moved everything down. So this way my arm is not in the way. All right, so we're ready to uh, ream this out. So we got the guide in here with the vice grip. We got the reamer in here. Uh, I coated this, uh, the inside with ATF. I actually also uh, pulled this back out as I was moving everything and I coated the bit with some ATF as well. All right, so we're gonna put this on. Okay. And then we're gonna hold this actually hold it like this and very slowly we're going to spin it and add pressure and push almost okay so that is it Okay, now let's see, I'll take this off. Slide this out. Actually, let's put this back in. What I'm gonna probably have to do is maybe just uh, give it a little reverse. Okay, and then slide it right out. Okay, so that's that. All right, now I'm just gonna clean everything up and we're gonna put the new spring in, valve and spring, and then we're going to vacuum test it again. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got this thing cleaned up. So I'm gonna take our valve, our oversized valve, and the two springs, the orange and the plain. All right, we'll give it a little uh, coating in here, a little on the valve. Then we're gonna slide this in. Okay, that went in actually very nicely. That right, went in nice. Okay, now we're gonna put this spring in. And let's see. Okay, so this clip 
has to go all the way here. So we're going to push in on this spring. Okay, you know what? This is a little too small. Let me get the next size. Okay, and we'll do it this way. So this way, this will just fall right in. Okay, that is in. Now let's make sure that our valve is free. Okay, very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to reset up for vacuum testing again and I'm just going to switch the angle one more time so you can see the uh, gauge. All right, so before we had about 15 inches of vacuum. And we're going to see what we have now. We have this, uh, I have put some more grease on here to help seal it. And I'm going to turn a pump on, so I'm sure it's going to be a little noisy, but I'm not going to do much uh, speaking. So we'll just watch the uh, gauge as, uh, let me just move this here. Okay. I'm hoping everybody can, can see that okay. And now we'll watch the gauge. I'm going to turn the pump on and we'll see what we have. Look at that. Let me just make sure I'm okay here. Yeah, look at that. 20. It went from 15 to 20. Double check, make sure I'm on the hole here. definitely on the hole here so that's a big big difference this bore was probably worn out and like I said from what this guy was saying and how he was describing it I had a feeling this actuator feed limit valve bore was worn so this is a an every a standard procedure for me to do an overhaul I always do this because that valve is so important and especially if it's got over 100,000 on it, I like to uh, do that. I get that uh, this Transco kit, which is enough for probably five or six valve bodies. And then once you use all this up, I bought the whole tool, you can buy just the refill kit, just valves and springs. Uh, so that's really about it on this 4L80E 2001 GMC Savannah 3500. We vacuum tested the actuator feed limit bore. We found it was worn. We put the oversized bore in and the vacuum dramatically increased about 20, which is great. 20 inches, which is fantastic. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. And if any of you have any questions or comments, uh, I'd be happy to leave them. And, and once again, I ask that you, uh, uh, I really enjoy making these videos. I, I absolutely love what I do as far as transmission goes. Uh, being in the business, I love it. And uh, I ask that you please uh, subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.